So we are going to have a brief discussion on the load flow analysis. The main objective of the load flow studies, or better known as the power flow studies, is to determine power system parameters, parameters such as uh, current voltage, active power, reactive power injections at buses, uh, active and reactive, uh, active and uh, reactive power flow through the transmission lines. These studies, apart from uh, determining the parameters, are also the backbone of some other essential power system studies, such as transient stability analysis, security analysis, and contingency studies. So, the importance or the need for the load flow studies uh, can be categorized into three stages. One is the planning stage, other is the operational stage, and the post contingency stage. So, we can see the importance of this. Uh, power flow studies from these three aspects. Uh, at the planning stage, basically the load <coughs> flow studies is done prior to the uh, to the development of the uh, system. Uh, in this particular stage, we uh, the plan at the designing stage, the uh, the capacities of various components are decided upon uh, before the uh, actual system is realized. So, uh, at the planning stage, also we uh, we analyze. <coughs> How the system would shift its operating point in the event of uh, some uh, new systems coming into being, or when we expand the given system uh, with the growth of load, how the system would, be, uh, would uh, behave, or how the operating point of the system would shift, uh, that, that is analyzed at the planning stage. So, load flow analysis has its uh, uh, importance at the planning stage in terms of deciding the various uh, ratings of various equipments. Uh, and to plan out the expansion for the future. In the operational stage, basically the pertinent operating information of the system is obtained from these uh, substations through the use of RTUs. Uh, the, the load flow algorithms are used to determine the current operating point of the power system. If there is any violations in the system, whether there is any overloading in terms of uh, power flow through the lines, real power or real power flow through the lines, if there is any overloading, that is uh, that is assessed to the uh, operation as the operation says. So, load flow algorithm uh, helps us to determine the operating point, what is the uh, operating condition of the system. Thereafter, the post contingency state, so if the, uh, if the system develops some sort of uh, uh, contingency such as the uh, line or particular transmission line is outage or some uh, generator is uh, removed from service, uh, uh, then the, uh, how does the, it affect the, self, the operating point? That can be determined from the load flow analysis. So that we can assess how the system would behave in the other in the event of occurrence of certain particular contingency. So post contingency analysis can be achieved through the uh, uh, through the use of load flow uh, algorithms. Now before we go into the formulation of uh, load flow problem, we need to classify the buses. The reason that we need to classify the buses is that at each load in power system, at each bus in power system, we have uh, two performance, uh, two equations that are governing the performance. performance. One is basically the uh, uh, real power flow, uh, real power injection and outage or some uh, generator is uh, removed from service. Uh, uh, then the, uh, how does the, it affect the, serve, the operating point that can be determined from the load flow analysis so that we can assess how the system would behave in the other, in the event of occurrence of certain particular contingency. So post contingency analysis can be achieved through the uh, uh, through the use of load flow uh, algorithms. Now, before we go into the formulation of uh, load flow problem, we need to classify the buses. The reason that we need to classify the buses is that at each load in power system, at each bus in power system, we have uh, two performance, uh, two equations that are governing the performance. Performance. One is basically the uh, uh, real power flow, uh, real power injection, and <coughs> power injection. so. In all, there are four variables at each particular bus. That is, the, those variables are uh, the voltage magnitude, the angle of the voltage delta I, real power injection PI, and QI, the real electric power. So, each bus has these four parameters. However, there are only two equations governing, uh, two governing equations relating PI and QI. So, the four variables cannot be derived from these. Uh, the four variables will not be determined using those two, two non-linear equations. So, uh, therefore, it becomes necessary to specify two of these four variables at each particular bus. Fine. So, so depending on which of these four variables are specified, the whole buses can be classified in power system. 
So the the classification. Uh, I just give you the uh, names of the buses that are classified. The, the buses that are classified into three categories. One is known as the uh, PQ bus or the road bus, in which P and Q are specified, while V and Delta are unspecified. In the generator bus, which is also known as the PV bus, the quantities P and V are specified, while Q and Delta are unknown, and they need to be determined. While the last category of the bus is more of a mathematical importance, that is a reference bus, uh, in which V and Delta are specified and P and Q needs to be determined. The reason we, we need a reference bus is because the angles of all the remaining bus will be assessed or calculated uh, taking the slack bus as a reference.